notifications and the video recordings by some members of the bench who complain that the, for, the, the 14 days the court is given to determine a dispute concerning a presidential election is too short. And I'm saying that statement demonstrates the failure of, the, with due respect, the honorable judges of this court to understand the electoral architecture in the Constitution of Kenya 2010. The Constitution of Kenya 2010 only anticipates a digital election. And if you are dealing with a digital election, 14 days is too much. But if you are dealing with a paper election, a manual election, you need maybe two months. That's why I wanted to begin. And this election does not meet the threshold in the Constitution at all. The presidential election that I'm referring to, that's before this court. It's not simple. That's why you have got spoiled ballots. In a digital election, you don't have spoiled ballots or rejected ballots. And you don't even have the question of whether the spoiled or rejected ballots count. It's not verifiable. Right now, I cannot verify where, where the, vote I, the ballots I cast went. I don't know. The moment I dropped them in that box, I lost all contact with those ballots. There's no mechanism of verifying. A digital election would give me a, a serial number by which I could track my ballots. So I'm saying that if you look at the threshold in the Constitution, we must work towards a digital election and move away from these paper elections which allow human interference without sometimes leaving footprints. I would now go to my submissions. I was supposed to be given, I was supposed to be given some aid. Yes. Where is the... If the time could stop running, we just we had supplied our the electronic instruments to the court. I don't understand what you said. I come there. No. Oh, you are open for me. The look the, the the PowerPoint document. Next slide. Yes, you are looking at an, an analysis of paragraph 26 of affidavit fi filed by Mr. Sunkuli in petition number 7, paragraph 226. And you can see that he's giving us, <coughs> he gives data of how the Kim's kits transmitted on 9th August at 17 hours at the close of polls. He gives that figure 
on 9th August at 20.45 hours, about some 3 hours and 45 minutes, he gives his figure of 13 million. Then, most surprisingly, you have two entries. It is the entry that num which gives us at 14 hours and 14.40 hours. The Kim's kids are transmitting some 23 hours later, still transmitting data. And we're saying that that data is not acceptable. So we come to the next slide. I'll just run through given the short time I have. When you go to that slide, you look, they tell you at 24.5 hours, on 9th August 2022, some 13,731,215 people voted. Polling turnout recorded on 10th August is 14,239,862 ballots. And on the 10th, that is the day after the voting, and we know that it's only elders where elections were taking place. Now, when you analyze that data, you find that 508,647 ballots are added on the 10th. And you saw Land Council Willis show that the audit of the register had almost the same number of ghost voters. So you can see from that data that they, they present, Mr. Sungwili presents, you are able to isolate 508,647 ghost cast votes which are more than the difference between the two con leading candidates. We've got the next slide. And if you look at the ballots that are recorded to have received, to have rec recorded on the next day, we are talking of some 1,665,000 412 curiously cast votes which are coming out after the close of voting and that's after three hours after the close of voting. So we take, if we take the total tally now, you find that the tally is close to, to it's, it's about 1.7 million votes. That spike in votes is not possible. That spike in votes is part of the problems we are having. That fellows were having access, the, the, Kim's, the Kim's kits that were still transmitting data from locations that are not clear. Because the Kim's kits that were in polling stations, the voting stopped on 9th. And giving an allowance of three hours or four hours for people who are sitting on the queue, you would understand by why Akim's kit would still be transmitting 23 hours after the close of elections is something that is difficult to comprehend. Also, my members of the Honorable Court, if you look at the Form 34C that has been published and interrogate the data there, if you look at the total of the variables ascribed to each candidate, the amount that you get is 110 votes less than the number that has been printed on that paper. Now, if you look at, that thing was boggling my mind. Initially, I thought it was a simple error of addition. But just come out, it was not an, a question of a one plus one equals three. Because when you look at paragraph 32 of the replying affidavit of Mr. Sunkuli, yes, I'm on, uh, yes, go to the next slide. Next. Yes, sorry, I forgot to thank you for di uh, directing. When you, if you look at <coughs> paragraph 32 of the replying affidavit of Mr. Sunkuli, the total voter turnout in the table when you subtract from it 
as given in the table, the number of rejected votes on Form 34, you get exactly that figure of 14,213,137, which in that reply affidavit they claim was an error of addition. But if you, if you interrogate the, their, their raw data, you find that that figure is the valid figure. So the, 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 um, the votes attributed to the candidates are fictitious. From par paragraph 32 of Mr. Sunkuli's replying affidavit. So, when you go, you go on to the next slide. I've reproduced the, I've tried to factor in, the figure that Mr. Sunkuli gives, and when you add them, you get the 14,213,137. Yet, when you add the figures attributed to the individual candidates on Form 34C, they come to 14 million, 027. That is not an innocent mistake. It is a situation whereby somebody has left a trail that they were working backwards from a certain figure which they had and they were working backwards and so they would going to get that. And most important, I would also refer to the, to the affidavit signed by the chairman, filed by the chairman in petition number five. At paragraph 95 of his replying affidavit, sworn on 26th August 2022, The chairman presents the exact figure of 14,213,137 as the total valid votes cast for all the four candidates. So if that is the figure that's coming from the raw data, that's the figure that's carried in the affidavit, then the, the values attributed to the, each one of the four candidates are fictitious and cannot count. And therefore, that Form 34C is an invalid document. Go to the next uh, slide. Sorry. Next. Yes, yeah, so in that, that slide I'm saying, we can only conclude that these figures which form the contents of th form 34C are cooked. You cannot have both of them in the same document. And this court should not allow that document to stand at all. And the conflicting figures, and those conflicting figures for valid votes cast of 14,213,137, Thousand, and the other one is the, the one when you, are, you add the values of the individual candidates, the four candidates, you get 14,213,027. Is evidence that the results were worked backwards to achieve a desired or predetermined outcome. Therefore, the, therefore the declared percentages for the four candidates. No, the votes attributed to the four candidates and the declared and the percentages attributed to them is all fiction. Now, I go to address the question of whether you can achieve, if, assuming that what, what in the totality of the announcements made by, made by the chairman, any of the candidates realized 50 percent plus one vote. Just checking on the time. Yes. There's no display for the time, for unfortunately. <laughs> uh, according to mine, time is over.
if you could just finish your slides. Okay, thank you. Because they seem to have lost theirs. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> so a further analysis of Form 34C <coughs> on voter turnout, the, ch the chairman announced, and that, that issue has not been retracted at the close of voting, he was answering a particular question, and a journalist asked him, as matters stand now, what is the national voter turnout? And he said, oh, that one, I can deal with it. And he said, as at the time he was announcing, it was 65.4%. And uh, according to what the Kim Skids had, had reported, and he expected that value to go up when all the Kim Skids had reported, and the manual had been included in it. So when you calculate that against the total voter register, the National Voter Register of 22,120,458 votes, you get that the voter turnout at that time was 14,466,799 votes. The next slide. So, the from form 34, the tallies are ascribed as are ascribed in form 34. You get uh, when you factor in the rejected votes, you get a total value of 14 million. We need to move to the next box as we agree on the our notes on the forms. 225, any contrary uh, number? So 225 it is. The forms, we record. What do you make of the forms? Let's have uh, two comments. So what, whatever happened for you, one form isn't signed, another is signed, yes. and even signed by them. Yeah, so we just it. note the two. Yes. I don't know if there is, uh, do we have a different opinion for those who have seen that we have two forms, one unsigned, populated, yes, but unsigned, and then one which is signed. So depending on what happened, we, we don't want to speculate, but we just have that in the report. Thank you. 
So as we are looking at it, uh, I think the team can bring the next, uh, we do six, we have two more to go before the break. Yeah, let's seal, let's seal number four. Let's see. Legendary status, my man. Yes, Dirk. Exactly. Oh my greatness. Dave, this line is not going down, and you're going to. That's all the electoral materials inside, are back inside. Okay, seal it. Please take notes of the seals. compelling are the figures that finally mathematics finds its way into invalidating so agenda you have no leave to address the court after time why don't you start from there from where from what time Start from there. Uh, senior counsel, we agreed on the ground rules yesterday. Your time is up. In fact, uh, his time went over because he was on the PowerPoint. We noted he went over by six minutes. So please, yes. If you have anything, you can reply when you have time to reply. Rejoinder. I will now invite counsel in petition number six, uh, Njuria, Yoka, Vicheke, and others.